So imagine that you have a very complex problem that you've already written a Python script to find out the answer. You want to go ahead and calculate that. Now with traditional computing, what we do is that we set a number of instructions and that sits in a queue. Now all of these instructions go and they wait in this queue and they wait until they can be processed by the processor of your computer. So really this is limited by one thing, speed of calculation, and this is measured as a frequency. That's why on the Raspberry Pis, on the cluster that we built here, the uh, non-overclocked uh, speed of those processors is 1.5 gigahertz. Now, really, this is a thermal limit and we can overclock this to 2.1. So this is the traditional computing approach. We have, again, that Q, we're waiting for it to be processed and at the end we have the output which is our processed unit. Now parallel computing works a little bit differently. Imagine now, so we still have that queue of tasks that we want to execute, but we can split up those processes across, let's say, the three nodes of our Raspberry Pi cluster that we built last week. So what can we do with that? Well essentially, each of those processing nodes has the same limit in terms of processing capacity, that 1.5 gigahertz uh, processing speed. However, now we've just divided those six tasks up into two per processing unit. So this is about concurrency of operation. So guys, before we get too far into this video, I'm definitely no expert when it comes to parallel computing. I'm just learning myself. So hopefully we can have a bit of fun. We're going to download the OpenMPI packages and we're gonna learn a lot. So one of the main key aspects of parallel computing is the fact that these processes, once executed, need to be able to communicate with each other. So when you run a script and it splits off into different processes, there needs to be some kind of interface and system that talks to each other, and that is called the message passing interface. Now, that is really the functionality of what you're downloading onto your computer when you download OpenMPI. So today, guys, we're gonna be looking at how we can actually install Open MPI on our little mini Raspberry Pi cluster. We're going to install Python the smarter way with one installation so we can manage dependencies in a nice uniform way. And we're also going to be using this Open MPI capability across the nodes so we can actually interface with Python scripts and get them running across the nodes in a concurrent way. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So guys, we're gonna be diving straight into the third part of Garrett Mills's building a Raspberry Pi cluster series. So the first part is actually just installing the open MPI software. Open source, very easy to do. So the first part, you need to um, jump into your master node. So I've, I've gone into mine and we need to actually operate as the root user for that. I just go sudo dash s will be as root and then we need to download these dependencies. That'll take a while. Now I could just copy that because I only have three nodes just the same that Garrett Mills did but obviously if you have more you will need to add that number there. Now that's as easy as it is. As soon as this finishes downloading, we'll have open MPI. Now the first program that we're just gonna do to test is just to make this C program and we're just gonna do the traditional hello world. Cool, so when that's finished, we can actually jump back out of the root. So you can just do that by going exit. We'll clear that from the screen and let's make a new file. So I'll copy that and we will go back here we will CD into our cluster. So remember, this is the network file storage that's actually common across the entire cluster that we set up, so we have to go into here. Now let's create that file, so nano hello mpi.c. We're in the file, we will right click and save it down. Cool, so once we've made that file, all we need to do now is compile it. So the way we're gonna compile it, we've just installed OpenMPI on all the nodes. So what we're gonna do is actually um, make a shell of one of our nodes. So we can get into one of our nodes by going srun dash dash pty bash. And this has directed me to node one. So after that, we can just cd into our shared storage and you should be able to see that hello mpi.c file. Excellent, now we just need to run mpicc 
hello mpi.c. This is going to compile it for us. Wait for that, go list, and you can see that our new file is a.out right there. Now we can exit this shell terminal and go back to our master node with the exit. Cool, so once that, that has been created, we need to create a new submission um, script. So this is going to be able to run that compiled a.out file. So let's copy this and we'll create a new sub underscore MPI file. And we're going to do this in our cluster shared storage again. So let's go nano sub mpi.sh and we'll save that down. Remember that the CD Slurm submit directory, that is just telling it we want that uh, output to actually be where we submit this or execute this bash file. So we'll exit, save it down. Okay, so now that we've got our compiled script and we've got our bash script to run it, let's run that bash script. So we're gonna go into cluster FS and all we're gonna do is use sbatch. We'll call a number of nodes, nodes equal three. We'll call, we'll define a number of tasks to run per node. And that's going to be equal to four, the maximum. And we'll call that, that file and we'll submit the job. Now I think that'll run very quickly so we can check the file there. So we'll nano into that Slurm file and we should see our nodes, not necessarily in any order there. So yeah, we've printed out hello world. Great, our first compiled script and we've run this uh, using OpenMPI. That's fantastic. So now let's get into the second part of this tutorial, which is gonna be how do we install Python the better way? Now, previously we'd opened all the uh, different nodes and we just installed, you'd in sudo apt get install Python 3 uh, across all the nodes. How can we do this better? How can we can control our dependencies that we're actually uh, keeping version control or some level of version control on the cluster? Well, the better way is to actually compile from source. And we're gonna compile from source and um, place it within our cluster FS file. Now that can be commonly shared across all the clusters. So then therefore the entire cluster would have access to the same, same source. So let's jump in and let's do that. So we wanna make sure that we're only installing on one node. I'm going to install Python in this cluster um, file share storage on the master node. So let's make sure we have all of these dependencies. So for the, downloading the latest version of Python from source, what you need to do is go to python.org, downloads, uh, click on the Python 3.10.0 or whatever the latest version for you at the time is, scroll down to the bottom and you're gonna see this gzipped source tarbell. Just right click on that and copy link to address. Then we're going to go back to our terminal and we're gonna start typing in these commands. So we've cd'd into cluster um, we're going to make deer build and then we're going to cd into build. So let's go wget and we're just going to copy that there. Bang, and now it's going to download that file. Once it's downloaded, all we need to do is run these commands here. tar x v Z F and then we'll just call that Python 3.10.0 TZ uh, DGZ file. Let that run as it uncompiles and then we'll CD Python 3.1 or well, 3.10.0 enter. Now we actually have to configure Python. So we're gonna configure, make, and then make install, okay? So the first step in building the Python is to configure the build of the environment. This is done with the dot configure command. Running itself will configure Python and to install to the default directory. However, we don't want this because we're going to pass it as a custom flag. This will tell Python to install uh, to a folder on the shared storage. Buckle up because this may take a while. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make this user directory. So if we go out of there, we'll make that directory user and we're going to CD back into our 
cluster build Python 3.10. So essentially all we want to do is configure this Python file. So we just go dot slash configure. However, we want to make sure that we have this prefix set to that user directory that we made. So we'll just let that build. Oh, well, sorry, we'll just let that configure. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is make the install. So what, we've already got a version of Python running on here. I think it's 3.9.2. So we actually want to make an alternative Python install. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go sudo. Um, make alt install and we're just going to let that run so now that that's downloaded what we're going to do is we're going to check if it works so we're going to do s run nodes equal to three and we're going to call the python file now the python file for me is located in the cluster fs user bin and the python version now you go dash c and i'm just going to print hello and you can see there that we get hellos back. So excellent, it's installed correctly. So now just to reiterate, we've installed the OpenMPI software. Remember that's a software that does this interface between the different processes um, that's required for parallel computing. Now we've installed Python and we've got a clean batch that we can now refer to for resource management and that's only on our master node. Now. For demo purposes, we're actually going to demonstrate what um, this parallel computing can do. Now, there's a fantastic library um, called MPI for Pi. Now, I've got the documentation here, but essentially, it's a really cool tool where we can harness Open MPI um, easily using Python. So, really cool functionality. Now, we're going to use this library, and we're going to use the exact example that Garrett Mills has done in his tutorial here. So, if you go to um, this link here, mpy for pi, you can see all the demo scripts that he has. So, he's got computing pi, which we're going to do, um, Mandelbrot, and uh, all these other things, reductions, spawning, threads, and that's all examples of how you can use um, this specific module to use open mpy. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to make a directory called calc.py. We're going to cd into that. Now I'm actually not going to be using the Python installation that we just um, used as an alternative on this master node. Now you can use that, but um, I think there's going to be some conflicts with my pip3 file. So uh, to avoid that, I'm going to be using my previous version, but feel free to follow the instructions exactly as Garrett Mills has done here. Now, all I need to do is call pip3 and I'm going to install mpy for pi and we'll let that run. So now within the calcpy file, what we're going to do, we're going to create this calculate.py file and we're going to copy the code which is coming from the demo master um, from pi for pi GitHub, but we'll copy it here from Garrett Mills's um, blog and we'll save that down. So once that's done, uh, we've created the pi file and now we need to create a bash file to run this. So let's go nano sub calc pi and we'll be calculating pi, approximating pi, nano. We'll submit this and instead of six tasks, let's run the maximum, which I think is 12. Cool, and we'll make sure that we are just using our Python 3 environment that we set up previously. We'll save that. So once we've created those files, all we need to do is use sbatch to run it. Run, excellent. Let's check SQ. Excellent, already finished. So let's take a look. Excellent. So we'll nano into that second file. And we can get our pi is approximately 3.14 18009, etc. And it gives us the error 
So if you want it to get a more granular estimate, um, Gary Mills explains here that you can just change the number of controlling intervals um, and get a more approximate, a higher approximation. But essentially what you've done, you've just used all uh, 12 cores uh, running one uh, calculation, which was approximating pi. So that is the power of OpenMPI and its interface with Python. So I hope that this tutorial really acts as a bit of an introduction into parallel computing and its capabilities and interfaces of OpenMPI with Python. Now I've had a lot of fun with this cluster over the last three tutorials and hope to do a lot more on the channel with the cluster but that really concludes the main setup process and getting in parallel computing and Slurm running on the cluster. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. So if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, we're going to be doing some more stochastic calculus, getting into the roots and the theory, and then doing some practical examples and actually doing calculations in Python uh, with risk neutral, neutral pricing and other things. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, YouTube, catch you then.